Okay, here we go. Well, you stole my first uh, line anyway, because I was going to say that I was Dr. John, but uh, true to form, he's already introduced me. <laughs> but before I begin, I want to say how beautiful Katie looks in her gorgeous wedding dress today. Simon, you've been truly blessed. I have. <laughs> so, after much head scratching and contemplation, Simon has chosen me to carry out the ritual humiliation <laughs> on his wedding day. <clears throat> Firstly, for those of you who are wondering why we are wearing kilts, maybe Simon's thick Scottish accent hasn't hasn't <laughs> you know, we can hear it out here. <laughs> It would be tempting to start with a few Scottish jokes, but being only a few places away from Alistair Kay, father of the group, <laughs> and more importantly, Sheila Kay, I would be fearing for my own safety. <laughs> so, for those of you who don't know the real love story that today marks, it started uh, when, as a 17-year-old uh, prepudescent boy, Simon, <laughs> still hoaxing a few facial hairs through, uh, travelled down to Wales in preparation uh, for a soapbox charity trip to Kenya. Little did he know what a life-changing experience it would be. <laughs> Needless to say, this was my first encounter with our male model with an obsession with all things petrol. <laughs> we survived Kenya, meeting an amazing community, working at a school in the Kabir Islam, as Simon's just mentioned. Interestingly, uh, this is where I believe uh, Simon first encountered children's work, and that's been uh, something that's uh, pretty much been a weekly event for him ever since. And I'm really uh, pleased to say it's something that he now shares with Katie. I think they've been a blessing to so many children. Anyway, back to Kenya. Enough of the nice stuff. Um, so, Simon bleached my hair when I was young and naive. I should have known better. As it turns out, my mother did know better. My hair was uh, properly dyed back to its original colour before I went back for A-level results day. Um, so, I said we survived Kenya, uh, but maybe I've got a bit carried away. Not all of us did. I came back, went on another holiday, then met up with Simon, and it turned out that he'd been struck down with diarrhoea and vomiting for two weeks. <laughs> well, there are some positives to this, Katie. <laughs> Simon's hygiene awareness has gone through the roof. <laughs> <laughs> he has implemented the Simon smell test, <laughs> of which I'm sure you're all aware. If you've ever seen Simon eat, you'll notice he brings the food to his nose for a few seconds, as though ready to taste a fine wine, uh, before he brings it back in front and down the hatch. I knew that Katie was the one for Simon the day that he allowed her to share a bottle of mineral water with her. Another sacred part of the Simon K hygiene regime, an honour I'm still yet to be granted. <laughs> So, Simon is not shy of standing out from the crowd. In fact, he firmly believes that uh, he is at the forefront of the fashion world, although this is not universally accepted. <laughs> For those of you who aren't familiar with uh, Simon's portfolio of modelling work, I'd like to refer you to his uh, catwalk work for the uh, L'Oreal Colour Trophy. I think it was in 2003, wasn't it? My bean. <laughs> Simon is, of course, uh, Scotland's answer to Naomi Campbell. <laughs> when Simon was working at the Bull Hotel, he decided to dye his hair blue, as it was supposed to be cool. <laughs> the upshot was that despite the undoubted coolness, uh, the manager was not happy uh, for Simon to tend the bar. Well, I quote, his hair was not normal. <laughs> Such was his commission, the commitment to fashion, though, it took him two weeks to remove the, the dye and return to work. <laughs> this is a man of principle. <laughs> <laughs> However, uh, you cannot keep Simon down for long, and despite uh, this invasion of his freedom ex of expression at this hotel, he didn't hesitate to take Andrew back. Um, to this bar to ask for Katie's hand in marriage. 
I can't talk about Simon and Fashion without mentioning, we all know it, the earring button. <laughs> I would have tempted to say it's a fashion faux pas, but as he hasn't quite seen the light yet, it may be a touchy subject. Uh, Katie. I'd keep an eye on your sewing basket. Any of some buttons, you know what that means. <laughs> Simon's love of fashion also spills over into his love of shopping, which I think many of us are painfully familiar with. <laughs> Don't worry, Katie. If you want to go shopping for clothes, you now have a personal shopper for life. <laughs> as anyone that's been uh, shopping with Simon knows, he loves the details, as he puts it. So I, I didn't really quite appreciate to what extent he, appreciated, he really liked these details until he came to uh, visit me when I was living in New York. Obviously the chance of free accommodation in Manhattan was too good to pass up. <laughs> but what I wasn't expecting was uh, the shopping list of limited edition trainers, clothing he ordered all across America for me to collect when he departed. <laughs> <laughs> Putting uh, fashion to one side, Katie, you have found a man who knows how to look after himself. I think we know that already. A five-step facial skin care regime is all I can say. Hopefully, we will thank him in years to come. Otherwise, we don't know why he's done it. <laughs> Simon's uh, not afraid to rough it, though. He's had numerous camping trips to Somerset, some of which I've endured. He's been to uh, Soul Survivor, Momentum, he's made it through. But this guy, yeah, he travels light. A 14 x 16 inch mirror, hair straighteners, not to mention the multiple bags of beauty products. Yeah, he roughs it, Katie. So, the use of beauty products unfortunately went further before the uh, summer that me and Simon both went to America on a long trip. Simon was working for Camp America. He was staying in uh, Michigan, but just beforehand, he did what any 20-year-old uh, male would do in preparation. He decided to wax his body hair. <laughs> Unfortunately, we're not just talking about the chest. <laughs> Paul Kelly was reputed like a good sister to tidy up Simon's bikini life. <laughs> This and could not be removed. <laughs> Kelly had an ingenious idea. Together we got a hairdryer and we managed to get the wax off. However, you can just imagine the scene. The girly screams from Simon. Uh, and for a few minutes we thought he was going to have a wax covered bikini for the rest of his life. <laughs> Simon, I know it's an emotional memory, but we'll hug it out later. <laughs> Any talk of Simon would not be complete without mentioning cars. Simon is a complete petrol head, but let's say his aspirations sometimes overcome his abilities. There was the time you ploughed off a country lane with your white golf into a ditch. <laughs> and then there's the numerous, obviously, uh, handbrake turns that you've done in fields that I think most of the church have uh, enjoyed. <laughs> uh, when he was 18, uh, Simon was, uh, Simon's dream car was a Z3. But uh, hopefully after today, he might be converted to a Rolls Royce. <laughs> yeah. uh, one thing's for sure, though, uh, definitely with the current car, he's upgraded, BMW convertible. He really looks like a man that's investing in his future. A subwoofer the size of a small country, <laughs> with a boot, will no doubt make the perfect uh, car for a school run, Katie. <laughs> As much as uh, we can all laugh at Simon's fleas with fashion, one thing is clear, Simon loves people. And he can light up a room in seconds. He can talk to anyone about anything with never-ending enthusiasm and genuine care. And that's a talent few people have. He always has time for others, no matter what is happening, to make someone feel appreciated, no matter who they are. He has the ability within five minutes to make you feel like you've known him for years. This is uh, the SK factor, or what I would like to call the special K factor. <laughs> <laughs> Another great quality of Simon's is that he's an eternal optimist. 
Unfortunately, the way most of us experience this is when he thinks half an hour after an agreed meeting time, he may still be on time. <laughs> Katie, we were all surprised that Simon made it to the church before you today. Even me and I was bringing it. <laughs> Although for many years, uh, Simon would try to tell me that he was happy being single and it wasn't the right time for a girlfriend, little did he know that uh, Katie was waiting for him right under his nose at Gold Hill. Well, once he met Katie, there was no holding back, and from day one they had been inseparable. Katie, we all owe you for the vast improvement you made in Simon's punctuality. <laughs> when Simon proposed to Katie, hours following a car crash, even with uh, the poor weather conditions of stopping his helicopter trip, it became clear that uh, not even a near-death experience or the great British weather would be able to stop you guys being together. Seeing Simon look at Katie and the joy we experience with them together, I think I can speak for everyone in this room when I say it has been a real privilege to see your story unfold. As I told Simon on his uh, 21st birthday, Katie, now one thing is guaranteed, your future is bright and your kids will probably be orange. <laughs> not about finding someone you can live with, it's about finding someone you cannot live without. And Simon and Katie, you have definitely found that person. It gives me a great pleasure to ask everyone to stand. And can we raise our glasses to toast to the happy couple. May they have a lifetime of happiness together. To the new Mr and Mrs K. <laughs> And finally, while you're all standing, I think it's time that we move forward onto the next phase of our journey. We're going to the party. <laughs>